Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some examples of loops in Python. In programming, a loop lets you repeat some task over and over until some condition is met. Uh, there are two types of loops we are going to be looking at. We are going to look at for loops and while loops. I'm going to be doing this demo in idle, so I will begin by making a new Python file. And this is where I am going to type my Python code. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, just a very simple while loop. Um, the way a while loop typically works is that you have some variable and then you are checking some condition about that variable. Uh, a common way to do this is to use an iterator variable, which is typically used, the, we use the letter i, and we might start with i equals zero, and then our while loop will check some condition while i is less than 10. So this is the condition that we are going to look for. Um, so once, once this condition is no longer true, once i is not less than 10, then the loop will be finished. But until we get to that point, we are going to do whatever is inside of this loop. Um, so for example, I might print i is currently and then I will print uh, whatever is the value of i. So this is going to say i is currently, and then in the beginning it's going to say zero. It's going to start with when i equals zero. Uh, so the first time it prints this, um, it is going to say zero. Now, if I don't do anything with i, this is a, a called an infinite while loop. So if you do not ever update the thing you're checking a condition for, um, it will run forever. And so i will be zero forever in this case. Um, and that is a problem. We don't want that because then our, our program will run until it crashes and, and that's not good. So typically what we want to do is we want to increase the value of i uh, or change it in some way. This is an easy way to think about it is by adding one, um, but there's different things you could do with this. Uh, this is just a simple example. So let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and run this and we will save it first. And so now when it runs, it starts with i is currently zero, and then i is currently one, i is currently two, all the way up to i is currently nine. So this is what we would expect to happen with a while loop. It runs a certain number of times until it is finished, and then nothing else happens. If we want to uh, just get a sense of, of what happens when the while loop finishes, we could add a print statement here. The while loop has finished. And if we run this, now it's the exact same output, zero up through nine, uh, and then it finally it prints the while loop has finished. Um, so this only happens once, this is not inside of the loop. So um, loops in Python work similar to conditional statements where the indentation matters and the indentation shows you how it is grouped. So these two lines here are grouped with the while loop and this print statement is not. Uh, I could have my while loop uh, do work with other conditions. Um, for example, I could say season equals winter and I could have a while loop that says while the season uh, and we use two equal signs to compare the string so while season equals winter and here we could say print, it is cold. So while, while the season is, printer, is winter, we'll print it is cold. Now, right now, this is going to be another case of an infinite while loop. We're never changing the value of the season. Um, however, we could update the value of the season in here. Um, maybe we actually ask the user what season it is. So we could say input what season is it now? Now in order to make this uh, make a little bit more sense, I'm going to add into my print statement, I'm going to say the season is currently, and then I'm going to put here whatever is the season. So uh, by putting the commas here and then putting the word season, this is the variable, and at the beginning it equals winter. 
So when this comes in here to do this while loop, it's going to check if the season is equal to winter. It is when I first run this because I have set it equal to winter and I will say the, the season is currently winter. It is cold. Let me add a period here in between. So it sounds like two sentences when we read it. Um, and then I will uh, ask the user what season is it now? If they enter winter, then it's going to continue to say this. As long as it says, uh, as long as the user keeps entering winter, it will keep running this while loop until eventually they enter something besides winter and then we will no longer be in this while loop. So I could add a print statement outside of my while loop the new season is and I'll put season. Now it is not possible for this uh, season to ever be the string winter with the lowercase w because as long as the season is equal to winter it is going to keep doing this loop. As soon as it is not winter anymore now it is going to say some other season that the user has input. So we can go ahead and run this. All right, so we have the, our, our I is currently, while loop is still running, and then it says while loop has finished. Now it says the season is, current, uh, is currently winter, it is cold. And that is because our default value for season was set to winter. So it's going to print this before it even asks me what season it is. So now it asks what season is it now? And if I say winter, it is going to continue to say the season is currently winter. As long as I keep entering winter, it is going to keep running this while loop. Uh, if I change my answer now to summer, it says the new season is summer and I can see the three arrows here means that it is no longer running my program. So it is no longer running that while loop. So that while loop will continue until the user gives some specific input uh, or changes some input from what I am checking it against. So let's take a, a look at another kind of loop. Let's do a for loop. A for loop lets you go uh, through um, a collection of things is a, is a good way to think about it. Um, with the while loop, we were checking some condition, but with the for loop, we're going to look at individual items within a set of things. Um, one way to think about this is if you have a string in Python, the string is a collection of characters. So you could do a for loop to loop through the characters in a string. So for example, I could have a word. Let's say my word is yellow. And I could say for letter in word print letter. And so now it's going to iterate through every letter in this word and it's going to print that letter out. Um, so if I run this right now, and I will go ahead and enter summer so we can break out of that first one. And now here it's, it prints Y-E-L-L-O-W. Uh, so it printed out each letter in my word and here are the arrows again. That means that our program is finished. So uh, notice that with a for loop, we did not need to update a value of something because the for loop knows how many things it needs to go through to finish the loop. So it just goes through until it is finished with this collection. Um, now we don't need to use a word as our collection. We could also use a set of numbers. Um, so for example, I could do for X in range. Uh, so the way that we would get a set of numbers is to give it a give, use this uh, this word range and then we specify um, a we can either specify just a stop value and then it will go from zero up to that value for example if I say 10 it is going to go from zero up to uh, 10 but um, I could also instead specify a start and an end value so I could say from 2 up to 12 and then we could print x is currently and then we'll print the value of x. So let's go ahead and run this. And I will once again enter summer to break out of my first while loop. Um, so here we have uh, y e l l o w and then we have x is currently 2, x is currently 3, 
all the way up to x is currently 11. Now notice that in my range, I specified the number 12. So it goes up to, but not including the top number. So if, uh, for example, I wanted to take user input, um, I could say top of range equals input enter the highest number you would like to include. And so in this case, the user is going to enter a number and they would probably like to see their number included. So one way that we could handle this is uh, we could say whatever we want our, um, let's also take, um, let's take a second input here. So let's say start of range is input enter the first number to display and then uh, and then here we have enter the highest number you would like to include so they're going to enter a bottom number and a top number but they would like to include their top number so when we're printing out their top number we want to include it so the bottom of our range um, first of all before we can use either of these when we take input by default it is being stored as a string and we cannot um, use a string here inside of range. Um, we need to convert these to integers. So we can do that by adding int around this and around the second one as well. Um, now, um, one thing to consider is um, when we're using int in this way, um, it is possible that um, the user enters something that is not an int. Um, and so if that were the case, this code would then fail to run. Um, so it's one thing we want to be careful of is to um, indicate to the user that we are expecting them to give us a number. Um, so uh, now if, as long as they're giving us a number, we are storing these values. And so uh, I can use these um, these variables start of range and top of range. Now, like I said, the user wants to include the number that they enter. So in this case, we would want to do top of range plus one because the default here is to not include the second number uh, when the range is being generated. So in order to include the, that number, we would add one. So now if we go ahead and run this, now, uh, once again, I will enter summer to break out of that first loop. So what is the first number to display? Let's say five. What is the highest number you would like to include? Let's say 17. And now here's my loop. It starts at X is currently five, X is currently six, all the way up to X is currently 17. So it does include the number that I entered. Um, so one more type, uh, uh, one more thing that I want to uh, demonstrate with loops. Um, if you watched the uh, previous video, um, you might recall using the turtle library uh, to draw shapes on the screen. And so we can also use a loop in order to draw the same shape over and over, or in order to be able to draw a shape that requires some repetitive pieces of it. So I'm going to add import turtle to the top of my file so I can work with the turtle library. And then I'm going to add down here at the bottom, I'm going to add, um, I'm gonna create a new uh, instance of turtle. So I'll say t equals turtle dot turtle. And um, let's say I want to draw a square. Um, so to draw a square, normally we would draw a line using t dot forward and some distance, let's say 50. Uh, and then we would rotate by 90 degrees using t dot right 90. And then we would do that four times. Now, instead of uh, manually writing this out four times, it is far more efficient to put this inside of a loop. So I could say for n in range. So I'll use n as my, my number here. So for n in range four, so that will happen four times. And now I need to add indentation to these so that they will both happen um, inside of the loop. And so now if I run this, and we'll enter summer, 
and let's do 2 and 12. And I have um, added a misspelling. Uh, let me fix my misspelling. Um, I misspelled forward. So let's go ahead and fix that. And break out summer. And, oh, my turtle draws on the other window. Okay, I'm going to run this again from my other window. So now hopefully my turtle window will pop up over here. And so once again, I'll type summer, then I'll type a start number and an end number. And now you can see my turtle has appeared over here and it has drawn a square. So that was based on the um, uh, using this for loop to go in uh, range four. So this is doing this four times. It's drawing a line, then it's turning right, drawing a line again, turning right, drawing a line again, turning right, and then drawing a fourth line and turning right. Um, so um, that is how you can use a loop to draw a shape that has um, a, a certain number of edges. Um, so let's uh, let's try one more thing with this. Let's put our um, let's do a nested loop. A nested loop is a loop inside of a loop. You can either have a for loop inside of a for loop or a while loop inside of a while loop or a while inside of a for or a for inside of a while. So uh, I'm going to add a while loop here. And um, I'm going to, um, let's, let's uh, reset our iterator variable. So I'm going to say i equals zero. So I'll reset that and I'll say while i is less than five. And I'll add some extra indent. So this is how you do a nested loop. You need the extra indent. And so while i is less than five, I will draw a square. And then I will say i plus equals one. So I increase my i each time. And um, I could also um, update my, uh, I could move my turtle each time as well. So here I will do t dot forward. Actually, let's do t dot pen up, t dot forward. So this will uh, move our turtle without drawing. So I'll do forward. Um, 20. Actually, let's do uh, 60. And t dot pen down. And so now it will move um, in between each of these squares. So um, let's go ahead and run this and take a look at what happens. So we'll use summer. And now here I can see it is drawing each of my squares. So it draws five squares and it has, uh, it moves them 60 each time. So there's a space of 10 in between them. So the, the square is 50 by 50. So it moved 60 units in between each time it drew the square. And so there are 10 pixels in between each square. So that's how you can use for loops and while loops and nested loops to do a variety of different things, including working with strings, working with numbers and working with shapes. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.